Hey guys, welcome to Gadget First. Today we're looking at the inside of a computer with a thermal imaging camera. It should be quite an interesting video because you'll be able to see uh, how heat builds up in the computer, where uh, it's optimal to place fans, and uh, how the airflow gets around. So it should be a really interesting video and should be quite helpful if you're wondering where to put your fans. So let's take a look at the inside of my computer. So as you can see, here is the computer itself. Uh, if we take off the side, you can see that uh, the computer hasn't been cleaned in quite some time. It is quite dusty at the moment. So, you know, it might be a more accurate representation of uh, how your computer might actually be if you don't clean it often. So let's turn the thermal imager on. And we'll let it calibrate quickly. Now, so initially, you can see uh, just how hot the graphics card is. The graphics card is currently running, well, it's not running at 40 degrees, but it is. The overall heat of it is about 40 degrees. Uh, so let's take some thermal images now, and then you'll be able to get a, a better, less shaky look at the uh, computer. As you can see on the front of the case, uh, through the uh, hard drive bay, you can see that two uh, of the bays were perfectly cool. The SSD and the second secondary hard drive looked perfectly cool, uh, but the very top hard drive uh, was glowing red. Uh, this basically means, obviously, the uh, top hard drive is running harder. But if we take a look now, you can see why. Right then, so this is the uh, front intake of the computer. And as you can see, um, we might not be able to see actually, but there are two fans behind the hard drive bay sucking in cool air from the outside. So obviously, um, the first two hard drives are going to be in the firing line of this cool air, meaning they're going to stay cooler, whereas the top bay uh, isn't in this uh, path of fresh, of fresh air. So you know, you're not going to get the uh, cooling effect of it on your uh, top hard drive. So that's obviously something to look out for. Um, I'm sure it's not going to make a blind bit of difference, you know, if you're just a normal user. But if you're a server user and you want your hard drives to be cooled to make sure they last the longest they possibly can, you know, it's something uh, that needs to be considered. You need to consider how well cooled the hard drives are to make sure that um, they last the longest they possibly can. Something else to consider now is that the graphics card is probably going to be the hottest running part of your computer. Uh, when it's running flat out, you know, it's going to be letting off a lot of heat. Um, reference cards usually have a blower configuration where they uh, suck in cool air from here and exhaust it out the back. Whereas, you see this is a non-reference card. Uh, these are made to be just the best cooling graphics cards. They don't care about the rest of the system. It's just purely they care about the graphics card. So... Um, this is going to heat up the rest of the system, especially up here. I mean, I can just feel the warmth. I don't need to put a thermal camera to that. You can feel how hot that is, um, and it's not even doing anything at the moment. Um, so you're likely going to get a pocket of air between the graphics card and the heatsink. Now, this is especially true if you have a really large heatsink like this, because it's going to block heat from just flowing upwards. Um, so you're going to want to... Um, configure your fans something like this so you are sucking hot air off of the graphics card and depositing it out up to the top where it's being sucked from the case fans at the top of the case um, you can also have it the other way around so it's sucking in cool air and depositing it out the back you're definitely going to get better CPU cooling with that um, but not necessarily better overall case cooling or better uh, graphics card cooling so that is something that is uh, top priority if you've got a really high performance graphics card and or you've got a really big uh, CPU heatsink. So now we're going to put the side of the case back on the computer and run some uh, GPU and CPU intensive processes and games and then get back with the thermal camera and have a look then. So we're running a few tests here. Uh, the webcam uh, frame rate will probably be awful because we're running both the CPU here 
and the GPU here really, really hard. We've got the GPU up to 70 degrees. It's been running for uh, a few minutes on combustor and the uh, CPU isn't overclocked, but it's uh, running flat out on Prime 95, running at about 60 degrees at the moment. Um, the GPU itself is overclocked to 1.2 gigahertz here. Uh, core, uh, sorry, the memory clock 1425 and the voltage on the core 1275. So a fairly hefty overclock from 800 megahertz. Although it is running fairly cool at the moment, but then we'll take a look in the case in just a second. Now looking at the uh, results after the computer has been running some uh, intensive processes, uh, the biggest difference that I can see is there's a massive pocket of hotness of, of uh, well, hot air and heat around uh, the heatsink, not on the uh, CPU heatsink itself, but around it. Uh, the whole motherboard around it just seems to be really, really hot, especially the RAM. The RAM is actually glowing red hot, whereas the CPU cooler itself is still blue. Uh, the same, same can be said for uh, the rest of the chipset around the uh, heatsink. It's all relatively hot. So looking at the main differences between uh, when the PC is running flat out and when it's idling is not actually the CPU or the GPU temperatures, but in fact it is the uh, RAM temperatures, which is quite a surprising result. I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. Um, the difference between the two temperatures, uh, looking on the uh, Fluke software on the PC, uh, when the computer is idling, you know, the RAM is not too much above room temperature. Um, you know, you're talking 36, 37 degrees. Obviously, it is hotter than warm uh, room temperature, but it's not significantly so. Uh, when it's running flat out, you know, we're looking at about 55 degrees, which is significantly hotter. Um, I mean, the hot point uh, when it's running flat out is 55 degrees on the RAM. So it looks as if the heat coming off the back of the uh, GPU is going up and it's being absorbed by the heatsink of the uh, CPU, which is dissipating it quite efficiently because it's, it's uh, got a lot of surface area and uh, two big fans on it. But the RAM doesn't fare quite as well because obviously it's got small heat sinks, no fans. So, you know, if you're using a lot of RAM intensive applications, you're going to want to uh, get better heat sinks for your RAM if you don't already. So, that's obviously something to look out for. So, thanks for watching. Um, I hope the video has been informative and useful for you. Um, we'll be using the thermal camera in more videos such as case reviews and uh, reviews on other components that don't necessarily have their own um, thermal sensors built in. I mean we won't be using it for graphics cards because obviously it has its own sensors uh, for temperature unless of course um, we want to test a certain part, a certain component on the graphics card but we will be using the uh, thermal camera more and more in new videos. So thanks for watching and hope you subscribe and like if you liked the video.